Hey guys, back at, at the table again. And today we are gonna be making um, some of my favorite foods that I don't eat enough. And I don't think we eat them enough in general. One of those is butternut squash. Um, so I have a, a coworker who's been getting some produce boxes. Her family's been getting produce boxes. And she's like, you're the only one I know who would eat this thing. She didn't even realize what it was. Um, and I've asked several people here at the office, you know, have you ever tried butternut squash? And they're all like, no, I've never had that before. So today I wanna show you guys how to cook this and then that way they can also get a little taste when we're done filming as well. So this is what a butternut squash looks like. Um, it is definitely more of our fall squash, so, but it is in season now. So we start to see it um, August, September um, and into October. And it's got kind of a sweet flavor to it. Um, but it's it's so tasty. So I went ahead, I've got half of it in the oven going already. But um, one trick, this isn't quite as hard to cut, but it is, it's still a little bit difficult to cut up. So what I like to do is take a knife and just um, pierce it just like you would a potato and make little slits in it. And I'm not gonna do the entire thing, but you just do that all over it I wrap it in a paper towel and I actually put it in the microwave for a few minutes. So you could do two to five minutes. Um, when you get to five minutes, it will start to begin cooking it. So at that point, it'll be okay. Um, it'll actually cook faster in the oven, but it's a little bit easier to cut. It st starts to soften that, outs that outside of the skin. So that is one way you can go ahead and put that in the microwave. It makes it easier to cut it in half a lot of people um, have, have issues with some of these bigger squash, like spaghetti squash, acorn squash, butternut squash. They're difficult to cut, so people just don't even wanna bother with it. But that's a simple fix. Poke some holes in it, put it in the microwave, it'll soften up, and um, it's good to go. So you can see here, this is nice and soft. You'll have um, seeds just like you have, they look like pumpkin seeds. So it's in the same, same squash family as pumpkin and you'll have those seeds inside. You just scoop those out. You can actually put them on a pan and roast the seeds and eat them um, or just toss them away. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this into large chunks. Now some people take the whole half, put some oil on it, don't even take the skin off of it and throw it in the oven that way. Um, I like it to be in pieces you can see it is a little, you can see me struggling just a little bit. It is still a tough squash to, to use. Um, if you, you wanna make sure your knife is really sharp and then if you go in at an angle, it makes it a little bit easier. All right, so we've got our pieces and then what we wanna do is just go ahead and get that exterior peeling off like I said, you could also, actually we might, this half, just throw it in, throw it on the pan. Because as it cooks, that will soften and you can, um, you can just take the peeling off afterwards. It'll be a lot easier to just take the peeling off. So we're actually just gonna throw it right on the pan. I might cut these in half just one more time. These I'm gonna cut long ways. So just be mindful as you're putting this in the oven you do want it to be similar in thickness. So if you've got any pieces that are really, really thick compared to the others, cut those down a little bit. That way it'll all cook at the same time, cook nice and evenly, and be good to go. So we're gonna keep getting these. And then we will just throw these on the pan. So I've showed you two different ways you could, um, you could peel it, as I did with this first one, or you could leave that, peel, that outside peel on and bake it. The outside peel is not edible, so just make sure that you do cut that off prior to consuming it. And we wanna roast this butternut squash, so um, there is a difference in roasting versus um, steaming. When you have a bunch of your pieces all touching, it begins to steam instead of roast. 
So we want to make sure that we're roasting our, our squash, not steaming it. When we roast it, it helps to release some of that water um, and gives it just really, really good flavor. So that's about all I can fit on here, bring this into focus for you guys. But you can see we're trying to make sure those pieces are not touching. They have a little bit of room. That way they will roast up. So next I'm going to put some olive oil. If you have an olive oil mister, that would probably be ideal. I'm going to try to freehand it best I can without just dumping a ton on here. And then I'll just use my hands and spread that oil around. I'm probably more liberal with my oil than most people. I like a little, and olive oil is great for you. Um, and really at the end, you're not getting quite so much oil on your pieces necessarily, but I like my, my um, anything I'm roasting to be pretty thoroughly coated. So just get those back to where we were before, where I mentioned not touching, all on the pan. They might slide around a little bit because of that oil, but that's all right. And then we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper on this. Um, throw it in the oven. I've got the oven at 425 and I'm going to check on it at about 20 minutes to see how it is. Sometimes really hearty squash like this can take longer to cook. So we'll check on it at 20, 25 minutes and we will see you guys back in just a second. Introducing the Star Communications app. All the tools you need in one convenient location. You can access Watch TV everywhere. Check local channel lineup. Check your Star email. View and pay your Star bill. Report troubles. Use your Star security app. Check your home voicemail. Sign up for CrowdFiber. Check your Wi-Fi speed. The list keeps going and going. Download for free from the App Store or Google Play. All right, we've got our squash in the oven, so we're gonna let that cook, like I said, about 20 minutes. Um, be mindful, I did put this in the microwave first. So it did start to cook, so it might even be less, might be more like 15 minutes. We're just gonna keep an eye on it. Um, sometimes it can just depend on how thick of pieces you have to how long that will cook. So the next thing that we're making is a burrito bowl. Um, and this one, I have actually never tried this recipe before, but it is on our Med Instead of Meds website and it has looked so good. I've, I've been tempted to try it multiple times. So we are gonna start off, we've got our skillet over here. I've got it on um, medium. We're gonna add a little bit of oil to the pan. And then we are gonna add in our spices. So the two spices we're using over here are cumin and we are adding fresh garlic. So Y'all know that's my favorite. So I'm just gonna add one teaspoon of cumin. I can get it to come out. I'll put that in my oil so it'll start to flavor that nicely. And then I'm just gonna add two cloves of garlic. It says um, it calls for three teaspoons which is technically a tablespoon, if you didn't know. Three teaspoons equal one tablespoon. And um, I'm using a garlic press here. So you could absolutely just use your knife and chop it up that way. I like a garlic press just because it's a little bit less messy and I don't have garlicky fingers afterwards. Not that that's always a bad thing, but sometimes it will linger. You'll smell it for a while. So I always remove the excess skin. Um, you could chop that up a little bit further if you've got, I mean, I've got my knife right here. Might as well. Or you can throw it away or depending on what you're adding it to, um, you could throw that in as well. When I'm doing something like a, um, a meal in the crock pot, uh, I'll just go ahead and throw that in as well because it'll end up breaking up over time. All right, and then we are also, well, let's get that cooking just a, a little bit. We want to start hearing our, um, our garlic sizzle. So, and it's getting there. And then we are going to actually add in our brown rice. So this is two cups of brown rice. 
I have already cooked it ahead of time. So this is a great recipe if you have any leftover rice from, a, from another recipe that you maybe made. Um, if you have leftover rice, you can just use this. You're gonna toss it all together and we're just gonna heat up that rice nicely. One thing about leftover rice, if, you, um, if you're using it in something like a stir fry or if you're sauteing it, if it is about a day, a few days old, it helps it to um, stir fry a little bit better. So you want to actually, it's better, I mean, you don't have to, it's not a requirement, but if you have a few day old rice, it's even better in this recipe. All right, so we're gonna let that just saute up, get the garlic and um, cumin to really get that rice nice and flavorful. And we will move on to our next step. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is use our beans. So I have black beans here. Now the recipe, or the, the can of black beans that I used was, was just regular. So it's not the no salt added or reduced sodium. I could not find that. So anytime that happens, you want to drain it, rinse it really well, get some of that salt off, um, and then you're good to go. For this recipe, it actually calls for um, you to keep a little bit of that liquid in there. So what I did, you can see a little bit, I've added water to this. So I've still got a little bit of liquid, but at least I've reduced that sodium. I don't have quite as much in here. So I'm gonna put this in a pot we have over here and we're just going to get those beans heated up. If you've got leftover beans, this is a good recipe. Now this does call for the whole can of beans. So um, if you were doing something like making your own beans at home, you know, you could use leftover beans that way. Okay. So the, then we're also going to add some chipotle chilies to that. So um, these are the chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, and they are really spicy. So you monitor how much you want of these in the dish. I think I'm just gonna do one. So the recipe calls for half, a, half to a whole tablespoon of the, the chilies chopped. So let me grab a fork and we will pull one of these guys out of here. One would be about a tablespoon. Um, and you can see how dark they are. Um, they, and they smell, they smell hot. So these can be very spicy. Just reduce this. We actually, I think I might use just a little bit less than that because I don't want to set everybody's mouth on fire here. All right, so I'm gonna add this to our beans. And that is gonna spice those up nicely and help give us a really good flavor. So we're gonna let that cook um, for about five minutes. You just wanna let that simmer and start to heat up and get those flavors melting. And then we will be with you in just a second to finish up this burrito bowl. Damn, please. Keep life exciting, even when it's not. Watch TV everywhere from Star Communications. All right, so we have started. Um, this is kind of like our salsa for our burrito bowl. So I went ahead and started chopping up tomatoes. I've got two here I'll do with you guys. But these are just your cherry or your grape tomatoes. Um, my knife is starting to get a little dull. But you just wanna chop those up into um, little bitty bite-sized pieces. And we're gonna add them all to a bowl together. So you need about a cup of tomatoes here. And um, then we are going to add some onion. So we've got a quarter of a cup of minced onion. 
And then we will add our lime juice. And we have one tablespoon of lime juice. And a little bit of salt. So we just need a quarter teaspoon of salt, so I'm just going to sprinkle that. Um, I'm actually going to put it in my hand. That way, can measure that just a little bit oh. in case I do too much like I just did. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do, we've got jalapeno and cilantro. We're going to chop both of those up um, and add that to our mixture. So I'm going to wear gloves. I always put on gloves when I'm handling jalapenos. I have done it before where I forget to throw on the, the gloves beforehand. And although it's not a major ordeal, um, if I have to touch my eye or anything like that later, it might burn a little bit because it takes a while for you to really get all of that, um, all of that heat off of your hands. So I put it on both hands. Sometimes I'll switch and only do, only do one hand, but really it's best to put it on both of your hands. So I cut off the top and then I just cut it in half. And then you wanna seed that. So I just take my finger and I actually just scoop those seeds right out. Now, if you like spicy, you could keep the, um, you could keep some of the seeds, throw that into your salsa. Totally up to you. The seeds are where the heat is. So um, you can really control that a little bit more based on your preference. And we're just gonna chop this up into little bitty pieces. So I'm gonna stack it and then just take my knife and do my rocking motion. And you wanna slowly be moving those fingers away. It is a little difficult with a um, glove on, so just be mindful because you can't quite feel as well as you do when you aren't wearing gloves as to where that knife is. All right, so then we're just gonna throw those jalapenos in there as well. And then the last ingredient here is our fresh cilantro. And we want a quarter cup of chopped fresh cilantro. So I'm just gonna pull some of this out. Um, with any of these that have, the stems aren't quite as thick and sturdy as some of your other herbs, it's not a big deal if you want to um, leave that on. Just don't chop quite as far, but it's okay if you get some of the stems. So I'm just gonna chop the first, the top half of that, kind of reassess where my stems are and where my leaves are and build a new pile. So you could sit there and pick those off. If you, if you want to, you could sit here and pick off um, each individual leaf. I have had to do that before when I used to work in the restaurant. But just another easy way is to sit there and chop, chop those, that top half. The whole thing is edible and it's not like um, some of your, your other herbs like rosemary or um, thyme or, uh, oregano that have a really thick, hearty stem. You don't want those pieces in your food. Cilantro is not like that. Cilantro and parsley um, are two that are very, very easy to use and their stems are not um, quite as thick. So that's about a quarter of a cup. We'll just finish chopping this up really well. And then we're just gonna throw this in, throw it all together. And then I'm just gonna stir it all up and we will see you guys back in just a second. 
After completing my contract, I still have to buy out of it? Come on. Here's your sign. Switch to the sign that's keeping homes secure and customers happy all over the area. Security from Star Communications. We pride ourselves on fair pricing and quick, friendly service every time. Somebody try to break into this place? Security from Star Communications. All right, our butternut squash is done, so you can actually start to smell it um, as it's roasting in the oven. And the best way to know if it's fully done is to try it and just make sure that it tastes good. And it does. So you, when you can pull it apart easily is the perfect time. Sometimes you just wanna take a fork and stab a fork in there to make sure that it can go through um, easily, that it's soft, tender, exactly what we want. And as I said, with the outside skin, um, once it starts to cook, it's very easy to peel off. So I've got a little bit of um, skin here. You can just take your fork and, or knife, I'm using a butter knife, and it just cuts right off. Um, now it is hot, so you just might wanna, you know, tell your guests or tell your family, you know, remove, make sure it's known that you don't eat that. But you can even, Take it and just um, scoop it, it's very hot, right off of the, the skin there. So very soft, very tender, and butternut squash just has such a sweet, um, sweet and savory flavor is just the best way I can explain it. Also, I meant to mention earlier, half of this I did salt and pepper, and then this half I actually did um, ground cinnamon. So you can see a little bit of that cinnamon on there kind of like a sweet potato. So you think about a sweet potato being sweet, you might add cinnamon to a sweet potato. Very similar um, consistency, but it's just a little bit different. It's, I mean, they're probably, they're, they're similar, but they are not exactly the same. So I don't want you to think sweet potato, butternut squash is gonna taste like a sweet potato. But you can use cinnamon. I like to just do salt and pepper, um, but cinnamon gives it a little bit more of that sweetness. So we're gonna move on over and we're gonna finish up our burrito bowls. So we have, um, our last step is just to add, the recipe calls for kale, a third of a cup of finely sliced kale, and um, one cup of shredded cabbage. Now, I could not find kale in the grocery store, so I use spinach. I love spinach, it's very versatile, so it's gonna go great in here. We're also gonna add um, one and a half teaspoons of olive oil and one and a half teaspoons of lime juice. And then we will toss that all together so that it's fully coated, nice and flavorful. So this is something, it's really great to use any of those vegetables you have left over in your, in your refrigerator. Um, and it just gives it a different flavor than what you're probably used to, or maybe what you added that food originally to. So we're we're going um, full Mexican theme here with the burrito bowl and we've got that tasty lime juice. We've got the spicy chipotle adobo peppers. So we've got a little bit of those different flavor profiles in there. So next you're just gonna separate that into four different bowls. So I've got my four bowls here. And we are just going to um, begin dividing e everything evenly. So we'll start with that rice, and we're just gonna evenly divide a little rice into each bowl. And without even tasting this, I can already tell the rice is the perfect amount of crispiness. I did end up turning it, cutting the burner off um, after about six or seven minutes. Um, but you can kind of start to hear, oh, it's done. It's starting to sizzle, crackle a little bit more than it needs to. So evenly have those, and then we're gonna add in our beans. Same thing here. Mix those in evenly between each bowl. And I can just tell these beans are gonna be spicy. So keep that in mind as you're making this for your family. Um, it might be have that little bit of a kick 
And you can definitely cut back. You could just use a little bit of that, the juice from the adobo peppers instead of full on a whole pepper. And that way it won't be quite as spicy. But it has really good flavor. So if you've never had those chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, I highly recommend you try them because they are really good and they give the best flavor. Okay, then we've got our salsa. So we're gonna throw this in again, splitting it all between each bowl. So many pretty colors here, different textures. I'm all about different textures in whatever we're eating. So if I can have something that just has, you know, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of that freshness, maybe a little bit of spice, um, it just tastes so good to me. And that's where really wakes up your flavor, your, your, um, your senses. And that flavor will just kind of make you say, wow, that tastes good. All right, then we're gonna add in um, our cabbage mixture. Of course, you would eventually toss this all together, trying to make it look nice and pretty for y'all on camera. So you can see all um, of the colors that we have going on here. But you're really getting so many nutrients just from this one dish. And if you're interested in any of these other recipes, definitely check out medinsetameds.com um, and see some of the things that we have available to you on there. So we'll scoot that out of the way. And then our last step is gonna be just a little bit of avocado. You can gauge this however much, maybe one person likes a little bit of extra avocado than the other. But we're just gonna throw some of that into the bowl. And last thing is goat cheese. I absolutely love goat cheese. It has a creamy flavor if you've never had it. Um, it is a different flavor profile. I did not like it when I was younger, but as I've gotten older, let's grab this butter knife. As I've gotten older, I just love the flavor that you get from it. So you need about two ounces total. This whole thing is four ounces here. So I'm gonna use about half of this container. Really just sprinkling this on. So this would be a really tasty lunch. Um, you could fluff it up if you wanted to have it for dinner maybe, if you wanted a more, uh, I guess, hearty meal for dinner. But they look so good. They have the most beautiful color, beautiful um, different textures going on. So I definitely recommend you try this recipe at home. Let us know if you liked it and check out some of the other recipes that we have on medinsetameds.com. See you guys next time.